Our eternal Father, we thank you. Thank you for this glorious life. This life you have called us into. This life you have given to us. And all of the provisions for this life. You gave us this life and you sustain it in us. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you because our days are blessed. Our days are consecrated. Thank you. Thank you for your great love, your everlasting love. Say, I love you because I love you. Thank you for a love that there is no reason for that love. Say, I love you because I love you. Thank you. Thank you because there is nothing attached to that love. It is love for love. Thank you for unveiling the power of this love in our heart. That we ourselves will love you for loving you. you. The reason that we love you is that we love you. Beyond all attachment. Beyond the things that you give and the things that you do. That we love. See what can separate us from this Lord. Not even the prospect of heaven. He said, not heaven, not angels. Why some desire you so that they make heaven? Help us to desire you because you love you. Jesus name. Amen. Could you to get our celebrity of father as you sit down? We are here again. Contact five. It's always good to be here. Amen. Let's uh, make sure there is no seat uh, before you and make sure that the pillar is not uh, it's not blocking you so that uh, all of us can have uh, contact by eyes. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for Youth with Vision Movement for this uh, vision. Their name is Youth with Vision. They are people of vision. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this contact five and the consistency for the past uh, six years, right? 2017 till date 2023. And this is the second edition for this year. The first one happened on the 8th of, uh, 8th of uh, April. This year, 2023, New Wine Summit. And then this one now, we are looking at the plan. Also, this date, July 22nd. Praise the Lord. You welcome us once again. Thank God for the extensive uh, prayer session that have happened and uh, the extensive uh, uh, worship. I want to appreciate uh, Pastor Timmy Tucker Ujo. Can we appreciate him? And his uh, entire team that work with him. Bro, Bola to Bro, Shun, Bro, Abe. I saw Bro, Shun. Is he still here? Is he still here? Okay, Bro, Shun, Bro, Abe, Bro, Bro, Taiwo, Sister Taiwo, and the whole host of you. Praise the Lord. I may not remember the name come to mind. You welcome every one of us here. You can put your hands together for yourself. You appreciate a person that make a duplicate in the house. Can we appreciate you? Pastor Femi Baba Tui is in the house. Bro, I your two is in the house. Let's appreciate him. He came in with uh, Sister Elimon. Sister Elimon, you're welcome. But that means Sister Toyo C. Every one of us says uh, Sister Taiwo. Praise the Lord. And all our media crew. Bro, Fidelis, thank you. Sister Gift. Sister Faith is here too. Praise the Lord. And uh, Bro Samuel is here. Amen. And uh, Sister Toyo, see, you're all welcome. Why are you not sitting together? Eh? Sister Elim, why are you not sitting together? Eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> why are you not sitting uh, together? Let me bring one seat for Bro Ayo here. Sister Toyo, see, relocate to that seat. You see how uh, Bro Dami is sitting down with uh, Sister Faith? Eh? 
I am move one seed for Bro Ayo. Let him come to the front. Amen. Move one seed for Bro Ayo. Uh -huh. That's it. Uh -huh. Good. Bro Ayo, you're welcome. No, yeah, praise the Lord. As much as we can, let's try to always eat together. Praise the Lord. Let's eat together. Let's do things together. The way we begin it tells a whole lot of how we go. We journey further in life. Praise the Lord. They are, you guys are still into a relationship about to get married. But let's do things together. The little, little details matter. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know why? Because there are couples that I can never see them together. I know See, the, if they are going to the same place, everybody takes their car. From the same house. Praise the Lord. Everybody, you have, a, you give the same excuse for the past five years, it's the same thing. So if it's okay, I, me, I did come directly from the house. For the past five years, the same excuses are going. But there are some couple for the past five If they go, you see them go together. Praise the Lord. So the beginning is very important. There are certain things that happen subconsciously. And those things that happen subconsciously end up forming our lives. Praise the Lord. And you appreciate it. This uh, once, once again. Now I'll be speaking on the plan part three. Why part three? This is 20, 20, year 2023, right? We did part one and part two to 2018. Praise the Lord. We did the plan. Part one is on YouTube and it's on our website. The plan. And then part two, we titled it 3D what? Plan. 3D. 3 letter 3. No, you got 3 and letter D. 3D plan. So the idea, I want to encourage us to go and listen to those messages. Go to YouTube, type in the plan. On the living school. You see there are the plan. The Vidabaka, you see. Or 3D plan. So this one is just uh, the plan part 3 for the sake of uh, the recording. By the time the recording comes out, it will be the plan part 3. And called by youth uh, with vision uh, program, uh, youth vision movement, contact five. The first two, the plan and 3D plan was anchored on Tyrannus Hall uh, teaching. Amen. I think it was a night vision then. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Praise God. I didn't proceed further. I said, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That is the plan. Praise God. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That is the plan. Everything is inside. We go further in First Corinthians chapter chapter one verse thirty. You see, Jesus Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Everything is in the original plan. And then we say that uh, we read Ephesians chapter three verse ten and eleven. You see the wisdom. The manifold wisdom of God will be made known by the church to the principalities and power in the heavenly places. Verse 11. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ. So you have an eternal purpose in Christ. You have the story of creation. You know about Christ. Everything aggregated together is in the plan. The plan of God is one. And everything is in that one plan. You see Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. You say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One law. That's why here in, in places like Ephesians 4, it's the one spirit, right? One hope, one faith, one calling, one body. God is one. You see, in that one plan, everything is inside. But from the very beginning of the creation of man, God gave the destination of the plan. He said, let us make man in our image. After what? Our likeness. In the cost of executing this plan, God made the heavens and the earth. You see how they, how they came? God made the heaven and the earth then in Genesis 3, there was a, a seeming deviation from the plan. To derail the plan, what God wants to do. And then God brought in redemption. And what is the center, what is the heart of redemption? Redemption is to restate the original plan. God now brought in redemption. It's like you are driving on a road, your car got spoiled. You deviated to fix it and put it back on the road, right? But the destination does not change. You see the plan? This is the destination. 
That's why he read in a, in scripture like uh, uh, Romans chapter 8. That have been predestinated to be conformed to what? To the image of his son. And who is the son? Who is the son? And Christ, who can continue that journey. And who is Christ? Christ. They say he is the image of the invisible God. Ephesians and Colossians. Ephesians 1, Colossians 1. Christ is the image of whom? The invisible God. So God created man and God is conforming him to his image again. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And so God is conforming man. God is joining and bringing man to his image. And what is that God's image and likeness that we are talking about? God is bringing man to who he is. You see the destiny of man. You see the destination of man. Is it all our journey? God will give you blessing along the way. God will give you things along the way. But those are not destination. Wisdom is not a destination in God. Righteousness, sanctification, redemption. The destination is what? Is Christ. God is bringing you to himself. You see, as he is, so are we in this world. Praise the Lord. This will help us so that we don't put, they say, you put the cat before what? The horse. So that we can put the, the horse before what? Before the cat. The plan is deep. It's so big, so deep, and it's so entailing. A lot of things are inside. So the things in the plan can derail you from the plan. I said the things in the plan, if care is not taken, corruption in man and the evil one can use it to derail you from the plan. The earth, the things in the earth, can it take people away from God? He said, Denmark has forsaken me. Having loved God, his present world. You see, all that is in the world is not of the Father, but of what? And he mentioned the loss of the eyes, the evil mention of his cattle. So let's go to that, uh, the, first sen- the first sentence we made, that uh, Genesis 1, 26, 27, this is the plan. Now, God made man, God made him like he made every other creation. But man was not the first creation that God made. Before God made man, God had made angels. Is how we follow. Before God made man, God had made angel. Before God made man, God had made a cosmic world. He had made a physical universe. The sun, the moon, the stars, and everything. In the recorded scripture, the last thing God made, the last creation we know that God made is man. Starting from the lineage of angels, He had made angels before He made the, the, the heavens and the earth, the physical, the cosmic world. Made the cosmic world before he made man. And like uh, Jesus himself said, You save the best, the best way. You save it for what? For the last. You see that thing that God made the last. That creation that God made man. God elevated him from being a creation and elevated him to himself. Praise the Lord. So God was not going to make another creation. God has been making creation, creation from heavenly beings to physical beings. Then God made one that combined both the physical creation and the heavenly creation. I heard it. You know, God made spirit beings, these are spirit beings. God made the physical earth, that is physical earth. Then God moved further and made one that combined both the spirit and the physical in one corporate being and existence. You see why that creation is higher than the previous creation. You had spirit beings that are spirit beings, right? That the physical creation is not given to them. You see, the earth has it given to the sons of men. Then he now created the earth that is just the earth. The earth is uh, God did it is automated, it's set running. It does not need any input from the spirit realm to run, right? The tree that you planted does it need any input from uh, the spirit realm to, to operate. Everything the physical world God made is a complete, a self living, self sustaining world. Everything that they need is in that same system. That cosmic system, the universe that God made, He put the sun. All they need is the sun. The sun is physical creation too. The sun, the 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 wind, and all of those things. The soil sustain the physical self sustaining just like the spirit realm self sustaining. They don't need any input from earth for them to be alive in the spirit realm. Am I correct? What do in Jamaica need from earth so that he can live? Eh? So that the tree does not need anything from any angel. Praise the Lord. He don't even have to plant it, he to plant himself. 
and grow. You see how God made it. Then God made one. One that combined the two worlds. Combined the spirit and combined the what? The physical. In one being that is called man. Which is a word for generic word for man and woman. Because to make man, God made man. Then when God made that creation, he stole it. So that we don't just sing amazing grace. He says, sing you praises with what? Understanding. God now made this one creation and then God elevated that one from creation. And then God elevated that one to himself. So this one is a part of me. This one is me and I am this one. Praise God. And then you begin to see a lot, even when Jesus said, if you have done this to the least of this, my brethren, right? In Matthew 3, they say, you have done it to who? You have done it to me. You were angry against Moses. He says, it's not Moses you are angry with. Who are you angry with? Me. So God elevated man to who? To himself. So all that happens to us, happens to him. It's a very delicate creation that God made. And it's big. So don't define yourself by where you live. Maybe there is no light. Those of us from Nigeria, some of us who are living in communities, there is no even light. Some of us live in houses that you are even ashamed to take your friends. Don't be defined by these things. Don't be defined by the things you see around you. I say God took that creation and did what? Elevated it, that creation to who? To himself. And all that happens to you happens what? To him. We now begin to appreciate scripture that say in all their affliction he was what? As as his faith. You see, in all their affliction he was afflicted. You see, if you pass through the the water, right? I will pass with you. If you pass through the river, if you pass through the fire, I will pass with you. Everything that happens to man happens to God because there is the joining. This one is by joining. Now, okay, you will see an example of this thing that God did with mankind. In what God did between man and the woman. You see, for this reason, how did the man and the woman become one? By what? By joining. The man is there, is separate. They gave birth to the man in uh, Ghana, right? They gave birth to the woman in, uh, in Brazil. Different parents, different language, different upbringing. The two come together by the covenant of joining. You see, and the two shall become one body, right? By joining. That's what God did in the beginning. God took one creation and joined that creation to himself. He said, this is your life. This is Praise the Lord. Are we following so far? By what? Joining. You now read the appreciate scripture more, appreciate more scripture like First Corinthians 6, 17. You say he that is joined to the Lord is what? Is he joining? One what? Speak. God took one of that creation and then God joined that creation to himself. Praise the Lord. That's why there's a message I preach sometime in Lagos that man is now part of the Godhead. Right? Not that uh, we are, the Godhead is uncreated. Not that we are going to become uncreated. Right? But God joined us to, he joined us to himself. You see, let us, that God expanded the let us to four. Let us was three before, right? Let us, let us make man in our image. How many were in the let us? Three, the Trinity, right? When it's a let us reason together, how many is in that let us? Four. Who is the fourth person in the letters? God took man and God joined man to himself. To come and share. When I say man has become part of the Godhead, God brought man to share in the life of the Godhead. That's what I mean. Not mathematics, not arithmetic so that we cannot take it up theologically. God took, God took man. He brought him to come and share in the life, the essence of the Godhead. So you now see your environment. Your environment is not the earth. In that, those days he put Adam in the garden of Eden. He said, but to him that overcome, who sit with me where? Who sit with me on my throne. He put, he put, he God made the earth, first of all put man on the earth, put man inside the garden. But he said, you are come unto Mount Zion, the city of where? The living there. To innumerable what? Company of angels. To spirit of just men what? He said, to God, the judge of all, and to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the eternal covenant. So, you see, your new life, now fish live in water, but you live in God. He said, in him we live. Where do we live? 
In him we live, we move and what? Have our day. When somebody says that I'm not your mate, I agree with the person that I'm not your mate. Because God, the one that is your mate, God is your mate. Be you perfect as your heavenly father is what? So when God compares man, God compares man to himself. Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am what? I'm holy. You see, they that compare themselves with themselves is not what? Why, why would I be comparing myself with a person? Mecca. He let I make a has let him carry the whole of it. Let I make I make her be the owner of the whole world now. I can't compare myself with a maker. You say, do you conform to the image of what? I compare myself with Christ. I say I'm I'm still very short to compare to the height of Christ. I I I, I labor and I stress and I, I exert myself to grow more so that I can grow to the full stature of Christ. To the stature of the fullness of the Christ. That's comparison. You are looking at that one, you are looking at that one, you are running. I can't look at the maker and run. He said, fix your eyes on who? Jesus. Not only fix I, fix I even by comparing him. As he is, so I was away in this world. Jesus will rise up and continue all night in prayer to God. Cry, you wake up yourself. You pray. Those days, there's this saying that rain in those days of uh, when the height of you like Billy Graham to say then. He said, what will Jesus do? What will Jesus what? See, is it what, uh, what will uh, Pastor Mecca say? What will Pastor Mecca do? That's why I keep telling you, don't say the God of Pastor Mecca. Oh. Amen. All those, God are, all those gods are gone. Oh. The God of Elijah. The God of... Uh, did you hear it in the New Testament? The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The New Testament is the total new dispensation for man. Not even the God of this commission, contact five. He's not the God of commission. The only, there's only one name for him in the New Testament. Is it the God and Father of our Lord, what? Jesus Christ. All to scripture. Paul, Peter, all of them. Uh, God, are you going to call God of Elijah? Who's a dimensional God? This one, the fullness of God is here. And that fullness is in the Christ. Call him. That's name. Amen. You are calling the God of Elijah. You want him to come and do exactly what he did in the days of Elijah. But you are calling the God of our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and do it. Not exactly what he accomplished in Christ. Not the things accomplished in Elijah. Those were faces. Those were journeys to the ultimate journey that we arrived at in Christ. Christ is the destination. Christ is made unto us with wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and what? Redemption. Wisdom is not the destination. There is a destination. That destination is Christ. So that we may be conformed to what? To the image of his son. Let us make man in our image. That is the destination and that is the plan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. Don't ever call. Some of you, of course, you know, of course, as you, God uses to raise me. Don't go and pray and say, God of David Abu Bakr. Amen. You're on your own. I don't know you. You see, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven. And that Father, you see, the God and Father of who? Of Apostle Paul. The God and Father of our what? Lord Jesus Christ. You see. So, I want to echo it again. I say God took one creation, right? And elevated that creation to what? To himself. And anything that happens in us happens where? In God. Everything that happens to us happens to when we fail, God to fail. Praise the Lord. That's how he became a man. This is the uncreated God. The uncreated God, you know, and the eternal God began to shrink. He was shrinking, shrinking, shrinking until he shrank and became a baby. Amen. Because when they gave birth to you, uh, Mecca, how were you? You were like a baby, right? God himself at this stage became a baby like yourself. Can you see? Who sinned? Is it God or man? Man sinned. At the point, God came and took the punishment of sin. Oh man, does that instruct us? I say God took one creation. I say the way the whole genealogy of creation from the spirit realm, heavenly being, the seraphim, the cherubim, the angels in heaven, the Lucifer before the fall, the angel Michael, gave all of the host of heaven, spirit being God created them. At the point God created the earth, created physical being. You can see the lion running up and down. You can see the moon, the sun, and the star. You can see the vegetation. God created them. But the last of all creation, because it's not recorded that God created any, not recorded to us, that God created any creation outside of man. So the, the last creation that God did was mankind. But that one that he created, like God took that one and elevated that one to himself. When man sinned, God was affected. When angels sinned, 
God was not affected. Other creation were affected. But when man sinned, creation, other creation was affected. The sun, the moon, the cosmic world was affected. But beyond them, God himself is affected because man is one like God. Praise the Lord. The, the angels that sinned, Satan, Lucifer, all of them, God is up somewhere for them, going to drop them for judgment. Amen. But when man sinned, he touched God. Amen. When man sinned, God did not directly sin, but God had imputed sin. In the person of Jesus Christ. So he said, it is appointed that after sin, what? All have sin, and the, cons- the judgment for sin is what? Death. God became a human being in the person of Jesus Christ, and God tested death. You see the relationship between God and man? That relationship is heavenly. You see how, it, how painful it is when something is coming between you and God. Because as far as God is concerned, there is nothing that stands between God and mankind. Right? Between the man that God, nothing stands between you and God. From the side of God. So even when sin, even sin came and erected that wall. Right? God himself became you. God took the weight of sin as a man. God became you. So that he can take that barrier, that something that is standing in way. Then today, some more time, money. Money comes from some of us that forgotten God. He said, Israel wax fat and they forgot God is maker. Because of the God prospered them on the things of the air, they forgot God. They forget it. Some of some people now they are on fire, they love God. They stand up, pray up and down. Like that. Give them money again, they will say that those days. Nothing should come between us and some people fame. You are not popular. You are not popular, you have now become uncontrollable to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost cannot control you, cannot, cannot lead you, cannot guide you. Again. You have come and you have become uncontrollable. Even pray. You see the life of man. You say, what is man that thou art mindful and the son of man that will take notice of him? God has elevated man to, to himself. The same status that God gives himself, he gives it to man. Jesus was praying in John 17. He said, the glory that you gave me. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the third, Jesus is, is one of the third person of the Trinity. Jesus is God. One of the person in the Trinity. And this is Jesus saying that the glory that you give me, I have what? I have given them. Which glory is that one? Is it the glory of the sun? Is it the glory of the waters? Or the whole cosmic world that God created, the heavens and the earth? So the glory you give me, I give it to them. He said, Father, I pray that this will be with me, right? Where I am. Jesus said, I, I, uh, he that overcome will sit with me on my throne. Just like I overcame and I'm seated with God on his throne. And Jesus was praying that you will be with me where I am. Where I am seated, you will be seated there. You see, this eternal privilege that we have. This honor that we have. And you are calling some people, you are calling people, people that even in the faith. You are calling them for them in the faith. To journey for that in the faith. And uh, no, what about that? And I'm busy. I'm engaged. Busy doing what? In the face of this life, in the face of this high calling. The Bible calls it a high calling. It was a holy calling and a heavenly one calling. In the face of this life. God calls us to say, we are, we are one, we are amazed. Abraham sacrificed his only son. There are even some preachers that say, I cannot do it. You God tell me I will do it. Amen. That man has been preaching a Bible that he does not understand. And that one has been walking in covenant with the, with the God that he does not know. And with the covenant of God that he does not understand. If you understand the covenant, you will give your son. So if you struggle to give your son because you have not understood the co- covenant, neither do you understand the God of this covenant. Abraham understood. God said that I know him. Do you know why God knew Abraham? If you don't know God, God will not know you. So when God tells that I know you, he said, Moses, I know you. You know why? Because Moses, he said, depart from you, I don't want you. I don't know you. God does not know them because they themselves they don't know God. How God knows you because you are good. So when God meets you, when God calls you into himself, and when you have responded to that call, calls you into him, and then God will not know you. He said, Abraham, I know you. Then he said, they that know their God shall be what? They will be strong to make all sacrifices. Those are the ones that can give their soul. Those are the ones that can make unusual sacrifices in this kingdom. The rest, all of us will just be saying, saying, saying high sounding words. But when God comes to look into that word, you will see emptiness. Somebody can be saying high sounding words. God give that same person a simple word of obedience. The person like this. 
so that uh, when we gather, this is an assembly. When we gather in, when we gather in our assemblies, when we gather in our networks, and when we gather in our movement, so that we can know the central thing that we are gathered on, that will aid our journey, our coming together, and our activities within the church, within our network, and within the corporate bodies of faith that we belong to, and even our, on our personal life, on our personal life. When, when spirit being seen, I say God was not what? Affected. The creation of sin. But when man sin, God took ownership for that sin. Because God has took the judgment for that sin. And the reason why, because God joined man to himself, what? From the beginning. If this my hand is feeling pain, my right hand, what happened to my left hand? Will it be under the same weight or the same pain? It will feel it. If one member is feeling pain, the whole body is affected. Please do not. If you have a headache in your head, though you are feeling head, and you are a footballer, you play football. Can you play football as at the normal time? This is your leg that know how to cut the ball into the net, know how to do it. Can it can it function? If you have pain in this hand, it's excruciating pain in this hand. Can the rest part of your body function as normal? Not too much. Man is a higher being. You know, in the order of being, man is a higher being than Satan. One of the I think God had created angel, created creation, and created man last of all. And that one he did last of all, he joined that one to himself to be first of all. According to scripture, from the understanding we can infer from scripture. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to run us through one of the things from scripture that will expand our, of this line of thought. That why? What is, the, what is the purpose of this thing? So that the way you receive God, and we can we appraise our relationship. You see, some people are here to give they are setting light to it. All that is pushing them. All that is pushing them. They look at how you can do things and then they have to be at the top of it all. They can be even in the plate. If you have a body in this one, maybe inside that body, you don't look at it, he sees you inside. He does not see himself. You can even can be an you can run an apostolic ministry like that. You can be a teacher, like you can be a pastor, like you can be an evangelist. There is something in man that you want to do something. And when you come to God, God says, drop that one first so that I can put desire and body in your heart. That's the quest of man. When they were building the Tower of Babel, was it God that told them? That's who man is. Corruption entered man in Genesis 3. So he corrupted everything. Even his body, his passion, it is, everything is corrupted. Then God tries to redeem us out of it. Practically, you know. So, so God created man and he put conquest inside him. That man only wants to conquer. So if that man become a Christian today, become come into the faith, is a pastor, is an evangelist, a singer, that thing is there. Then God will have to take it out of you. And then put something that is holy, pure. You want to sing this there, you want your song, song to go all over the whole world. Is that not the first uh, body in element? Is that not the first body? You listen an every all over the this is there inside of us. God has to take that one so that he can stay in your major. Because God gives us major. He calls one apostle, that apostle goes over the whole world. He calls another apostle, he may not travel out of his state, not his country, the state he stays in that land. He has some God calls and say, You are not going to, you won't allow them, you won't even can't give them to travel out of their country. All the things you do, you do within the sphere of this nation. Your books, your message can bless you everywhere, but geography. God, even our calling is geographically measured. When he called Abraham, he told him, this is the land of God. When he, called, when he created Adam, he put him in geography. Where did he put him? Where did he put him? Even our calling has a geographical boundary. But has no spiritual world. Adam was in Eden, but the impact of his life touched the whole earth. Am I correct? It was what he ate inside that garden that has created a problem for us today. From the garden, he touched the whole world and touched generations that are coming. From where? Inside where? The garden. When Jesus himself came, when God gave birth to his son, God gave him a geographical word, boundary in his call. He said the lordship of what? Israel. Jesus' ministry was confined within Israel. He didn't travel to Europe. He didn't travel to Africa. This, apart from when he was small, they were running away. When he started his ministry, did he go to Africa for crusade? Did he go to Latin America? Did he cross the Atlantic, cross all the ocean? You see, there was a geographical major to his calling. 
But the impact is what was not geographical. The impact is eternal and transcend what generation. So the fact that God put you in one uh, village, you know, you're already sad. Eh? And you, and you go online, you see how people are holding meetings in Brazil. Hey, they are in Toronto. They are in New York. You know, now the more you go to New York and Toronto, the more you get more money, right? And the more you stay in one village, the more you get less money. Amen. Our calling is not denominated in money. It's denominated in the Holy Ghost and the love of Jesus. From that village, God will take your life as an instant and pour it all over the whole world. You may not have a recorded message. God, take it in the spirit. This thing happens in the spirit. They that worship God, worship Him well. In the spirit. God is served in the spirit. God is worshiped in the spirit. Not on social media. Social media is part. God uses, God uses, it's all at His servant. God uses everything. God uses social media greatly. But God is not served on where? He uses it, but He's not served there. God is served where? In the spirit. That's why some of you now, too, maybe now, if you, if they ask you now, you know, <laughs> they say, go to, South Africa. Just go and minister to one person and come back. Amen. But when you say you are going to South Africa and you are going to minister to a congregation of 3,000 people, are uh, waiting in South Africa, you minister and every 3,000. You know? If you are going, there is the air around you, right? When you finish, there is the air around you. But when you are living here, to so just go and minister to one soul in South Africa and come back and that same air is not there. It shows the corruption that is in your heart. John chapter 3. How many of you were spoken to in John chapter 3? That classic gospel. Eh? One person. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 5. The beauty. You say multitude, right? So which is greater? Matthew chapter 5 and John chapter 3. When Jesus spoke to only Nicodemus, one man. Which is greater? None is greater. Amen. Is any greater? So the one that is going to minister in Matthew chapter 5, you carry that air. But your man is going to minister in John chapter 3 because it's one person, one Nicodemus, right? And you're already sad. It may even before the administration, right? Why is my ministry not growing all over the world? This thing called growing, ministry growing. Please, let's wash. Because of the corruption in man is so deep. It's deep. It's deep. Corruption is so deep. God you see, do you transform by what? You see the ongoing journey, ongoing process. It keeps on going. Praise the Lord. So, so what, uh, let me now go back to the thoughts we have been trying to establish. Pray from, from there so that this thing can help us to appreciate God more and then you appreciate the things you are seeing in your life. Sometimes you know why I don't appreciate the things you are seeing in our life? Your conscious mind is not comparing you, but your subconscious mind is comparing. You hear what I say? Your conscious mind is not con- you are not, you know, I'm not aware of this thing. You are not aware of your conscious but it's then your subconscious mind. Let the Holy Ghost help us. You know, it's the only, only the Holy Ghost that can assess that place. Where the Holy Ghost can help us, we journey together with God. We align with God to knock out things from your subconscious being. And God purify us from there. Praise the Lord. No man is to God is very, very deep and profound. You hear scripture that you are the apple of my eye. You are my treasured word, possession. We are not doing God a favor by serving Him. God is our life. I say God called us to what? Elevated what? To himself, into his own life. So don't view your human life as one life. The God is there. I can give him money. I'm contributing money in the, right? In the church, I'm giving. I give very well. I am. I'm there. No. The life you have now is the life that is in God. He that is joined to the Lord is what? One what? Spirit. You and God share one life. So when you talk about God, you can see that I kind of see the kind of energy, passion you carry for God. And everything that is called God. So if you are in a community, you are in an assembly, they are doing things in the name of God and for God. The way you do it, they will think that you are even the leader of that assembly. That's so why I'm not the pastor. You have not understood this life. I'm not the settlement. Uh, contact five, am I the visionary? Am I the brother? Talk man. The way you do it. Anything you want to do, except you are not doing it. He said, whatsoever your hands find to do. How did he say it? How do you say it? Do it with what? All your mind. This is contact fire. This is youth with vision. All of you in youth with vision. With what heart are you carrying the things in youth with vision? Oh, you are seeing it as youth with vision. No. Everything we do, we have learned to do it with our life. All our commitment, if you are committed, if you are involved, you are involved with what? 
With what? With your life. God do things with his life. Praise the Lord. That's Psalm 63. David, say your loving kindness is what? Better than life. I went to the issue of sin. That when other spirit being sin, what happened? Who was affected? God was not affected in person. The personality of God was not affected. God in person, right? I say other creation were what? Affected. But when man sinned, was the person of God affected? Answer. We're all Bible students. Don't answer for the sake of answer. Answer in the light of scripture, what you know in scripture. When man sinned, was the person of God affected? Eh? Praise the Lord. So when you call Yeshua, when you sing those songs, we just say casually, when you sing that song, your heart is it in those song. From the understanding and the revelation of who God is and who, who God is, who you, God is, who God has made us and who we have become in God. You see yourself and God as one. You have ownership mentality about everything called God. Praise the Lord. God has become your father. Everywhere he's your father. You are not in the street of Brazil. They are doing their thing in Brazil. Amen. He is standing in the in Brazil. He is your father. People are doing things. You are carrying. You are carrying the burden. My father. My, the kingdom of my father must be in this land. In this Brazil. Let me go back to my own place, Nigeria, and let us do our religious activity that we used to do there. Amen. Do your programs. Do the next programs and go. No. Paul was passing through a place and he saw an inscription to an unknown god. Ah. Right? Is that not where he said? He said, This God has come to show him to you. That's why he made those statements that in him we live and move and what? That God is not served with my hand. He has appointed a time in whom she will judge the whole world. God saw it and that thing in him just woke up. Everywhere you go, you have ownership mentality about God, about the reign of God, about who God is. They ask you on the street of uh, Jamaica, He's my father. You don't go to America because you want dollar and because you don't want them to deport you. You hide his name. It's my father. Praise the Lord. That's it. I learned some people go, when they travel now, maybe they have uh, three children. And they ask them, how many children do you have? They say, no, we just have only one. So that uh, the rent, you know, in UK, it's well structured. If you have three children, you cannot take a house that only pays somebody with one child to take. The person that has to maybe like three children, have a boy, a girl, there's a mix of children, you must take maybe minimum three bedroom or something. And here you want to take one room or one bedroom, you now begin to point everything. You don't know who your father is. You don't know this thing that everywhere he is your father. Amen. Not only your father in name and in contact, but in principle you stand with him. Now, let me ask all this question. Satan and man, who will be more judged? In the coming uh, eternal judgment, who will carry the greater judgment between Satan and man? No answer because I've been talking about man since so I'm just asking a normal question. Eh? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm asking a normal question. In the light of what you know, just answer us. Is there a second mic? Media. You have a second mic. Uh, please, can you activate that second mic? Let's pass it. You you give us if you say whoever you say you give us the reason why man and Satan right who will be more judged in the coming eternal judgment whose judgment will be more severe all right who wants to answer okay sister Elimon can we appreciate our dear Elimon man sir okay sister Elimon. Praise the Lord. Can we appreciate uh, Sister Elimon for that word? Who else? If you have a contrary opinion, please speak out. If you have so, just say what you know. Don't uh, let me just follow. Okay, somebody. Okay, bro. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I I believe it is man. But we have an option from the Holy One and we know all things. So it is laid on us to know all the knowledge and the precepts of the Father. But the state of this advantage. Can we appreciate bro? I be I to take input from any other person. Who else? Nobody has okay. My brother there. Amen. Amen. I will judge more. Man in our own let us. I believe Satan himself was a man let us because he's a child. 
God, the man that God created that physical baby in Genesis chapter 1. I, I have everything. I will appreciate our brother for perspective about it. Let's appreciate him. I say we are not scoring. Everybody is putting everybody in here. Nobody in here. From the beginning, let's check from the fall of the devil. There are some things that angels do not know, even the devil. He wanted to look into it. He said, I would go, I will ascend to the heavens. And I would. so there are some things, even though he was, he has high ranking, he is an high rank angel, but there are still some things that was, that he did not know, that he wanted to stretch out. So that was where his, his fall began. But man, after the redemption, God gave man access to all. He says, who knows the things of the spirit, save the spirit of God. And the spirit of God is in man. He gave him access to all of God, which the devil did not have. The devil, even though he's in heaven, is an high rank angel, but he does not have the access to all of God. Praise God. I will appreciate uh, my brother for his uh, input. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. I'm enjoying the conversation so well. Oh, yeah, praise really. God. Thank you. All you right, know, right. Uh, you said the question is who will be more judged, Satan or man? Okay, um, I just, um, just read a scripture that says that a servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. Many blows. But um, there are some that will be beaten but not with many blows. But that's not where I'm going to. We have the Holy Spirit. Satan does not have the Holy Spirit. So he said, to whom much is given, much is expected. The expectation on us is very massive. Because Pastor said by telling us that we, we share the same spirit with God. So we are equipped, as it were, we have all it takes, all that pertains to life and godliness. So the judgment is supposed to be severe for a man who has the spirit that is operational in God to fail in this course. So I think a man that refuses salvation will be terribly punished. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will appreciate uh, Pastor Namika Zubike for this last contribution. Amen. You see, this thing that we have all put on the table, we now go and look at the the doctrinal basis for whatever conclusion we have we have uh, come to here. You know why? This question is very key. Understanding this question will tell us the vol- the weight of responsibility that you have. You know, like when you are sitting, a man that is sitting on a, what is it? A keg of gunpowder, right? That can detonate. And a man that is sitting on ordinary share, would they see the same way? Eh? Well, you know that if you put too much weight, when it's in blue, they will not even get your pieces. You just cut and piece it. But the man that is sitting on normal share, you know, you can just sit and move the share anyhow. We have a lot of responsibility. Too much responsibility in this life. Praise the Lord. You know, the question test our understanding of this whole message that we've been given from the very beginning that we started the plan that God took one creation and elevated that one creation and joined him to himself. Right? That whatever happens to that creation happens to what? God. It's just like I've joined myself to, to let's say, Sister Faith. Right? Anything that happens, once Sister Faith has fever, automatically I'll have fever. Right? But I know, let me say, I know, bro, somewhere, uh, we relate. How are you, Sam? Hey, what do you need? You need my vehicle. Come and carry it. You need my this. He has access to everything that I, I could give him or stuff like that. But he has access to everything I have somewhere. But Sister Faith, anything that happens to her, happens to me. Which one is higher? Eh? Sister Faith, right? They joined, I have joined to Sister Faith. Anything that happens to her, once she's amputated on one leg, I'll be amputated and my one leg is amputated. That's how God joined man to himself from the beginning. So when man fell into transgression, God had to come and become a human being. As a human being to carry the transgression of man. Because the second person cannot, there are two now, the second person cannot carry it, but this other person can carry it. Let me go and what? Carry it. 
So me and Sister Faith has become one. Now she's supposed to carry a load. Sister Faith cannot carry it. I will step out and what? I will carry it. Is that where we started from? Another from things I did not mention. When it comes to sin, there are some things angels do and then God will judge them. He said, angel, the sin of angels started with thought. It's not as if they took one action. He said, for thou hast thought what? In your heart. Man will think in his heart. God will try to express it. He will go ahead and go and do it. God will still come on the stage and still be pleading with him. Don't do it now. Turn this one. He will still be proud about it. Is it the same frequency? I say, you have thought, you just thought in your heart. But man will think it in his heart. God will try to stop it there. Right? He will stop. He will go ahead. After he has done it, God will still come and say, okay, this, this is not right. Don't do it again. Let's, this, he will still be arrogant about it. You see, the relationship of man and God is too deep. I beg us. Paul will say, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. He said, by the mercies of God. He said, present yourself a living sacrifice. He said, what can separate us from the love of what? Of God. In Christ Jesus. The love of Christ. He said, tribulation. These are men that have understood this relationship. So, Christianity is not just that one. Eh, all those give this testimony. Thank God, you know, like that eh, I got a contract. God, these are blessings in life that God gives you. But this life, where you can throw away everything because of what? Because of this life. With God. We are struggling to pray. You know what I mean? That means I don't have time for God. The man that is not praying is simply saying, God, I don't have time for you. You are struggling to study your Bible. If you are the, the person that is struggling, the man or the woman is saying, God, God is not worthy. Let me put it that way. It's another way to say God is not worthy. You are not studying the word. You are meditating and eating the word. You are staying in the word. Oh God, you are my God. Because God is the speaking one. You you relate to God through speaking. You are utterance. You are either thinking in words or you are uttering words. Even our worship is an utterance of words. It's song. God is word. So you relate with God in word. He said the word became what? Flesh. You are either staying in the word, either in meditation, in the reading, or you are staying in the word in the in not even prayer, you staying inside the word. Praying and say, God, thank you, Father. You don't have time for that. You are saying that God is unworthy. There are other things that are more worthy. Because you know, there are other things that take your time and attention more. In the light of this thing that we have been saying. Now, let's go to the question. So, I will, we will look at it from uh, the scriptural basis. As a man and Satan, who will be judged tomorrow? Now, the first word I will say in light of that, then adding my voice to what everybody has said here. Man's sin is double sin. Angels is one sin. But for a human being that will stand in the judgment, our sin will be double sin. Satan's sin is one. Ours will be double sin. The initial sin, like those of angels, which is the, the initial sin, angels sin, and God put them in judgment, right? Man who did that initial sin, that is the first sin of man. God is not going to judge mankind based on that first sin. That first sin has already put all of us in judgment. For all have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory of God. That first sin has put all of us in, it, in what? Eternal condemnation. And then because we cannot pay the price for eternal condemnation, God, who is the eternal one, came and paid the price for that one and so neutralized it to them. So man start on the second news late. Are you getting it? So, the initial sin, man had that sin, angel had that sin. Angels have been still held by God for that sin. But when man was in that sin, God came and removed that sin from man. Can you see? 
then the second thing of man is not that man went to commit fornication man went to tell a lie the second thing of man that God will judge man for is thank God our brother here Pastor Femi Babatu is an evangelist the second thing that God will judge man for is the rejection of his son are you getting it? All that we go to hell, every human being that goes to hell, is not because of oh, fornication. This I don't, is because what? Those are secondary what? Those are secondary element. The first element, the first thing is what? You see, all whose name are not what? How do you get your name written in the book of life? When you give your life to Christ, when you come into Christ, you get a new life. And that inside the ingredient in that new life is a life that detests and will not save you. He says that he's born again, sin net not because his sin what remains. You're not going to like love sin again. If you occasionally fall into sin, what happens? Repentance. He said there is a fountain open for the house of what? A fountain open for the house of is Jacob. That fountain is the blood. This is the second sin of man. It's much more severe. Don't forget the foundation we laid. When angels sin, God, God did not suffer in person, right? That's in cost God, nothing in person. It just is works. You know, God can create and, create and make a new heaven and a new earth, right? What does it take God to make a new heaven? He just spoke the first word, let there be, let there be, and it came. So that was what was affected. Maybe when maybe angels could sin. But when man sinned, God was affected in person. Is that not what to say? God has affected you, what? Now, let's proceed further. I said the man's sin is double sin. The initial sin, like those of angels, is the first sin. Man's sin, angels' sin. God is still holding angels on. God will judge angels based on that sin. But in the plan of God, God is ready to forgive that sin to mankind. The second sin, rejecting the person of God, in his personal suffering for man to be saved. Not that I just rejected Jesus Christ. I just rejected. No. That second sin is higher because you see, God came and suffered for God to forgive us, take away the initial sin from man. That first sin. God came and suffered and paid the price. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, he was in the garden of Gethsemane. His sweat was becoming like blood. You now look at that one and count it as an unworthy thing. Which sin is higher? To eat apple. You eat apple to commit the first sin. Right? And to commit the second sin, you look at the person of God in all his suffering. And you turn your back on it as an unworthy something. Which is higher? Which sin, which transgression is higher? My brother, can you get the picture now? You get it now. Because my brother was the only one that says that uh, man's Satan judgment to be had and Satan. But are you okay? Do you get it now? So you can you are changing your position now, right? You now agree with the whole all of us now that man's judgment to be what? Higher. To whom much is given what? Uh, Pastor make us be say that God gave man the Holy Ghost, right? That's why I say that uh, sin against the father, right? There's forgiveness, right? I gave the son. There's forgiveness. But not to a generation to whom God released his Holy Ghost. That sin is higher. You see, there is no forgiveness. That sin is higher. The generation to which God released his Holy Ghost. His spirit. God did not just release his spirit. For God to release his spirit, Jesus has to come. Somebody had to journey from the God, from the Trinity and come down and prepare the way for that God can release his spirit to man. It is not recorded in scripture that God gave his Holy Spirit to any other creation apart from man. And for him to give man, Jesus had to come, suffer, die, and everything like that for God to release his Holy Ghost. Are we together? Now, I will say that the second sin is higher than the first sin. When God did not forgive angels, God forgave us. How? By taking the punishment himself. Now, we now go ahead to reject that a second time. I repeat again. How God will judge men by those that accept Jesus Christ. We go to, you know, eternal 
if you saw with God, those that reject the soul. Look at it, it's an evangelist here. And all of us know the scripture. The passage is what? The Son of God. The epicenter of eternal judgment is his son. Those that accept his son and stay in his son, God will accept. Those that reject his son, those are the ones that God will judge. Am I correct, sir, evangelist? You don't compare the two. I'm trying to highlight the responsibility that we have. It's not casual, heavy, this and like that. The one that Satan is going to do this one is small. The weight of judgment on man is higher. It's higher. If you want to call it danger, the danger you are now is standing is higher. Poor Roda, knowing the judgment of men, we, we persuade men, we beg them. He said, Behold, the severity, the mercy, the kindness, and the severity of God. He said, Knowing the judgment of God, he said, We persuade men, we beg men. Let's do some biblical mathematics. The second God is always higher in intensity than the first. The second heaven, the second heaven, and the second earth is better than the first one. Is that correct? You know, God made the first heaven and the first set. After that one, pack up. He made the second, the new heaven and the new earth. Which one is higher? Both in intensity, right? Intensity of everything. Both intensity of glory, intensity of everything, all intensity, the second is higher. The second testament of God to man is better than the first testament. Which is higher in intensity? Which one is higher? Okay. The second man, the second man, they were the second Adam, is superior to the first Adam. The first Adam and the second Adam, which one is superior? In intensity, right? Who is the first Adam? Adam, right? Who is the second Adam? The first human body was the natural body. The second human body is spiritual. The first and the second, I mean, even your own human body. This first and the, which one is superior? In intensity, which one? Now, this list of three things now. The second life of man is better than the first life of man. The second is eternal in the glory of God. The first is not. Right? Some will, also, some will be eternal in hell anyway. The first life of man, you know man, two life. The first life of man, which you saw in, in Genesis chapter 1, 2 there about. And the second life of man, which is higher. What is the second life of man now? The second one is that is in Christ. is a new world. Creation have a new life, which is called the eternal life. Is it the life that was in Adam? Eh? So the first life of man and the second life of man, which is higher. Okay. The second family of man is better than his first family. The second family is eternal. The first is not. You have, I mean, family. The first family, okay, your brother, your sister, maybe four of you. But the second family of... Uh, of man, which is what the in the marriage supper of the lamb, all of us will be one family. The first family of man and the second family, which is higher? Which is higher? That your first family, I be sister Buster, sister D, sister D. That's your first family, right? Uh, uh, your mommy. But the second family, which is the redeemed family, which is higher? The second, right? The second marriage of man is better than the first marriage. Right? I'm married to sweet, sweet love, grace, right? But I'll also be married again. Amen. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Where we'll be joined to God in eternal uh, union. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Which is higher? The first marriage or the second marriage? <laughs> so, finally here, in this emphasis, let's look at uh, the second sin of man. is more terrible than the first sin. What is the second sin of man? When you reject what? The, the, the salvation, right? In the second sin of man that you are rejecting the way out of the first sin. Did you get it? The first sin of man is the original sin, the first sin that we did. But the second sin now of man, which angels don't have the opportunity, the privilege for that sin. Angels don't have the privilege for the second sin. The second sin of man, is when you reject the way out of the original what sin, the plan out of the first sin. You look at that plan and you reject it. That is the second sin of man, which is higher. Which is higher? Okay. I said the first sin for man, for angel had no way. The sin of angel had no way out. 
But the first thing of man had a way out. The second thing will have no way out. Having rejected the way. See the second thing of man. The first thing of man had a way out. But the second thing of man who has no way what? Out. We should not be like the sin, the sin of angel. The sin of angel had no way out. The first thing of man had a way out. Jesus Christ. The second sin of man had no what? Way out. That second sin is a rejection of the way out of the previous sin. It is a double transgression for man. The first sin had deception inside. Oh, please, I want us to listen. The first sin had deception inside. He said, Satan deceived me and I was? And I ate. The second sin had no deception. Every one of us know that uh, Joshua, right? Some tell that they prefer to go to hellfire because Michael Jackson will be there. Is that sin deception? You know? The first thing had deception. The second thing that man will commit will have no deception inside. The second thing will be a product of conscious human will. Full human consciousness. That one, they didn't, they've not seen uh, death before. They've not seen uh, hell before. They've not seen uh, fire before. You know, this joy, fire burning. They've not seen, so when they talk, talk, God was talking to them, they don't know it. And when they fail, you say, God, in times of ignorance, you overlook. You and I know fire now. Who does not know fire here? They say you are going to burn in hell fire forever and ever. Do you know what it is? You say you don't know what it means. When you put your hand inside fire, at least when fire burns is more, you know how it is, right? So this second one is going to be full human consciousness. You accepted it. It's a man in his full consciousness, rejecting God, knowing the consequences, but going ahead to embrace it. People know the consequence of rejecting God, but they don't mind, they don't care. It is conscious hatred of what? Of God. You remember Romans 1.32? He said, who knowing the judgment of God, that those who do these things, what? God will judge them. They don't only do it, but they, they are even encouraging others that will do it. Praise the Lord. So this is the conclusion. You see, repentance is an eternal red line in God. And it does not stop at the initial event of salvation. Maybe I just want to give you, I just say, repentance is a life. A life you now live. A life of broken heart and a contrite spirit. A meek, listening and obedient heart. That's repentance. If it is not in you, then the initial repentance is false. If repentance is an event, I repented 10 years ago, right? It's an event. Repentance is a life. A life of a broken and a contrite heart. A life of meekness, a life of broken, a life that you listed. I say because once it happens, once repentance happens, it continues. Because it is a life imparted into us by the gift of God. Say by grace you are saved. And it is the gift of God. And by grace you are saved. It is the gift of God, not by yourself. Now, why have we gone through all of those things, stay all of these things that we are saying? We have to go through this extent so that if we know the blessing, oh God has joined us to himself, eternity is for us, everything that God has, he has given to us, we have access to it. But then there is still a caveat on that there is a danger. You see, that endure to the end shall be what? Sin. We cannot be toying with levity. If you look at the weight of responsibility, the weight of what God has given to us, we cannot now be toying with those things as if those things are our mate. So you see the kind of life that we have. You see the responsibility that you have. A lot of things you, you are taking as an option, they are not optional to you. It's not an option. Some of us take prayer as an option. Prayer is not an option you have. It's a life you must live. Staying in the world is not an option that you do. It's a life you must what? You see the way people like David went after God. You see the way people like Abraham. Look, who was God to Abraham? Is it the same way that is it the same way Abraham was seeing God? Is it the same way a lot of us are seeing God now? Because see God is an option. When God becomes your life, is it for me to live is Christ? Shall I become what? Christ God. So for me to live is Christ. And then to die is what? It's good. You see it? Amen.
will begin to pray. You see the plan? Or calls you to himself. See, there are so many things in this plan. The plan of redemption, salvation. But all of those things, we just did, we are just in a total summary. There are things that can be open in these things. But just do it, just like an, we are just going through an overview. We are not going into even details. You see the plan? This is not Psalm 80. You see, the Son of Man, whom I made strong for myself. When God calls you, God calls you to Himself. So a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the thing that he has. Not consisted. It's that life is hidden in Christ. Now, where in God, our life is consisted in God. He said, man's life does not consist in the thing that he has. Are you known in heaven? We told Daniel, oh man, how you were esteemed. Anything Daniel on earth, why men disrespect him on earth? In heaven, it's Daniel in heaven. The same thing, in that man disrespected him on earth. So what should stand between you and God? Between you and this life of God. This life in God. This covenant that you have. This eternal covenant. Is it heaven? Is it nakedness? Is it sword? Is it pestilence? Is it is it is it principle? Do you want him? 